Hello and welcome to another edition of our Discover Love Academy. I am Jacqueline, the founder and creator of Discover Love Matches as a professional matchmaker. And I am also the creator of Discover Love Academy by bringing together phenomenal, incredible experts that cover so many topics and so much opportunity for you to learn and grow. And we are rolling into our third quarter. So we are excited because we've had a chance to keep learning from our experts. And now we get this dynamic duo that you're about to meet and learn from them on such a powerful level to transform your love and intimacy journey. So you guys jump in. I don't know who wanted to introduce first and tell us a little bit about yourselves and why you're part of our Discover Love Academy. Go ahead. Oh, I'm the one. Okay. <laughs> the I, leads. Well, I was just thinking even when, when you talked about Discover Love, because you know, our, our thing is really to demonstrate, to to you know, bring over what love is, what true love is, and, and what it looks like, what it feels like, what it sounds like. And so every time we're here on your show we, or on your class, we just really love being here Thank and you. fire inspire love in all of your clients and all of your students exactly you guys are so right and that's what it is it's about truly discovering it discovering how we go about finding it for each person so i love it so much and that's the fun part of of today i know i know my beloved wife heike and i when we first met we had no idea about the soulmate twin flame thing just all these things started happening that were that were strange, especially for me, because at that time I was in law, I was completely non woohoo. I didn't believe in angels and guides and all this stuff that I do now. And, and, and yet some intense things were happening that I had never experienced in a relationship with people. And so we wanna, we wanna bring this to the world, this whole idea of you know, the difference between soulmates and, and, and twin flames. Now, that said, I wanna start the conversation off with of the other side of this whole twin flame soulmate search and so while it is really powerful and loving and amazing and i never saw it coming the biggest drawback sometimes is when people go out in the world seeking their twin flame only right very they limiting are, they are not experiencing all of the beautiful connections that life has to offer and some of those connections may be, in fact, the ones that prepare you to meet your twin. Right. Like for me, I went through a terrible one-year marriage, um, and I know I had a soul contract with this woman, and her, her job was to show me what love is not, so that when I met this one, it was just boom. And so I, that's, that's always an important thing to start off with because we used to have twin flame dinners and, and share all this. And then we notice a lot of our clients calling us and saying, well, I just met this guy, but he's not my twin because that, 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 that. We're like, yeah, but he's a great guy. What's he doing? <laughs> Oh. That's so true. And I think it can be so limiting. I'm a huge believer in twin flames. And as a spiritually gifted individual, I can actually see the energy between two people. And so I will actually be having a consultation with a client and I get a vision of the person they're supposed to be with and there is an, an energy arch. But not all moments are supposed to happen at the highest peak and people keep wanting that one and only and they forget that each of the people we meet along the way is part of the journey to actually recognize and accept and embrace your person. So this is such a powerful and really needed topic to go on and dive in deep about. Yeah, absolutely. It is, you know, all of it is beautiful. Relationships, mm -hmm. we talked about this before, I believe. It's, it's, it's a lifelong workshop, <laughs> right? And, and there are some master classes you wanna have taken <laughs> before, before, for example, your twin shows up because this is when, when it's just explosive, right? Everything and everything that's still in the way is going to come up. And, and we've worked with clients too in, in the realm of how they actually not going to run away, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly it. Not run away. What a concept. Everybody's always, they're fearful. And I always say, you've got to get ready. So when your person arrives, you'll actually recognize them. But people keep thinking, oh, if it happens, it happens. It's like, no, 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 it doesn't work that way. Exactly. Because it can be quite explosive. And <laughs> luckily we 
cleaned up in both of our past marriages, um, kind of karmic soul contract, all of the big stuff. So we would not have the fights because I know from some twin flames, I mean, they would throw food at each other and almost kill each other at the beginning. So, so I want to point this out that while it is super magical and I don't want to miss any moment, um, it, it's really deep. It is really, really deep. It is like you, you have your mirror in front of you the whole time. Now you have that in regular relationships. You have that in soulmate relationships. But when it comes to twins, you, you just can't hide anymore <laughs> so you better want to be in alignment and and as much in your truth and authenticity as possible and so you know breaking down what are the differences so there are and and, uh, and i also want to be clear we don't look at one as better than the other there, there's no such thing as like twin flames are up here and then regular relationships at all everything is equal they're just different types and and especially energetically. So you have, you know, in a sense, your standard, your standard relationship. And we've had many of those in life. I know I have. Um, there's, there, there, wasn't, there wasn't the intensity. And there's a lot of other signs I'm going to get to. But there was never, even though I was kind of in love or in a fat infatuation in the moment, it didn't have that, oh, my God, I'm looking at not only somebody I have known for lifetimes, but really my other half, my, my, my yin version of, uh, of me. And moving up into soulmates, I think we have many different soulmates on, on, on our plane here. And those, those can be friends and mothers and, and, and you know, acquaintances and business contacts, but we just have that, that feeling that we know this person because our energy resonates on the same level. And I love, I personally love the teachings of Teal Swan and she talks about how it's like a soul river family that comes down and so you recognize those other energies that you're really in harmony with and then there's a the twin flame so <laughs> twin flame is a very unique relationship in that i believe that at least in each lifetime that there really is only one and sometimes maybe you don't even meet that one in this particular lifetime the teaching is along the lines of there's different ways to describe this one says it's a soul broken in two i don't believe that i I believe it's more like a, a, a twin. Like this is my soul twin. So like we have, right. twins, we have twins and stars. And, and when I met Heike, it was, well, the first words out of her <laughs> mouth when our eyes met, and mind you, she was not looking for a man or relationship whatsoever. We've told that story before. Right. Neither. The first words out of her mouth when, she, when we stared in each other's eyes was, there you are. It's about time. We have work to do. Right. <laughs> and I love that. And it's just, it just propelled out of you. Like just, oh my gosh, this is what it is. It wasn't like, let me analyze. Let me think about this. Let me debate. It's like, shoom, you knew it. And then yeah. she said, don't you dare leave your toothbrush at my house. <laughs> yeah, because I was done with relationships, right? So, and then he shows up and, and then I, I recognize it. And when I look back, there was always for me this feeling that I have a big job to do. There was always this feeling I can't do it by myself. And there was always this feeling or the need like with my past relationships to work together and it never really worked. Mm -hmm. I had all conscious men um, in the past and yet no matter what I tried, it just didn't fit and it didn't fit right. And my real, real life purpose, again, and how I today serve here, uh, really only became clear when Jonathan showed up. Right. I was kind of, kind of like always circling it around, and it was never quite right. Exactly. <laughs> All of a sudden, when he totally. showed up, that's why it came out of my mouth. It's about time we have work to do. And, and then I realized, oh, wow, this is, okay, now I get it. This is the plan. And I, yes, I have been preparing all my life for it that we met at age 45. And um, yeah, and then everything was already set up. So mm -hmm. being on my purpose by myself, being in my passion was, was obviously really, really helpful. And training myself in, in, you know, my purpose and how I show up in this world and training myself in relationships for sure to then come to the point of, okay, I'm ready. 
I'm ready. Right. Well, and that's what's so important. And as I work with clients in matchmaking, I always say to them, it's not just about the quantity of dates. It's about the quality of your own journey and being ready when that person arrives. So you can say, there you are. Now let's get to work. Because if we don't do the work before for ourselves, we can't even recognize what that is. And it is so interesting because I have matched such great people together. And if they haven't done the personal work to be aware of that person and want to have a deeper level of a connection, they're absolutely going to miss it. And it's going to be like, what? How did you not see it? And so it's very interesting even as I work with clients because they show up differently to me on a spiritual level when it is a deeper soul connection and it just it's so obvious obviously to me but once they start dating it's like oh this is a totally different relationship than you've ever had before mm -hmm. so i love that you guys have such a great example to show but also have had your own journey to get to there absolutely i definitely um the last one both of our marriages was super intense um very much emotionally verbally and mainly and um, I learned everything what was relationship was not I, I was leaving him and then I was drawn back it was like this no I, I still need to show up I need to show up I need to learn. clear you know like I said karmic contracts and learn and um, this is why today I can so compassionate work with with people who are in a relationship or who are still in a relationship and are not supposed to be there, right? So just really Great. find find your truth and the and the whole self discovery and all of that, and then it expands to okay, now there's a partner. That's a whole other self discovery. <laughs> right. Go into that. Yeah. Well, I love how you say you weren't looking, but you knew that you couldn't quite become and do the work you wanted to without that partner. It wasn't that you weren't capable of it, but the combustion of the two of you together is what you knew you needed. And so you were wondering how that was going to happen, what form it was going to happen, when it was going to happen, and who it was going to happen with. And you had already put that intention. So you were looking, but you weren't honing in on like, are you my person? Are you my person? It was more like, hey, this is what I'm looking for. Let's see who shows up. And you allowed him to show up and you recognized each other when you both showed up. Well, this is the most painful thing for me to, to watch like how women or men, but specifically women are scanning every potential partner. And there's a lot of different scanning going on. That's very um, true. And now we're adding... Uh, the soulmate twin flame kind of thing rather than really going to our hearts and our intuition and, and how it feels and and is right now supposed to be and, and the, the clue is really right now supposed to be and and does it help me grow or you know does it make me small and in that moment you already know twin flame or not because a lot of times then you think it's the twin flame and and again you see so much pain of well, I can't leave because he's my twin flame. And if he's going to leave, now my life is over. Mm -hmm. And and like Jonathan said before, having a twin out there does not even mean that you are together. It might mean you are there together for a while. It might mean that it's the other one is not even an embodiment, meaning you do notice someone next to you. It's, but the, the, the true North Star is love, right? Love and expansion. Exactly. Compatibility, uh, great sex, I mean, communication. These are the things that you actually want to look for when, when you find a partner. And some of it comes maybe later because as much as I was on my spiritual track for 25 years before I met him, I mean, angels and archangels and all the masters and the ascendant masters and all of this, I knew everything but that there's something called twin things. Mm -hmm. Right. So that was to me very surprising, right? Maybe if I would have known, I would have looked too, right? It's like, okay, where is he? Is he that? And and yet, so I went into it very innocent, but from the moment we well, met, it was so completely different. And I wouldn't have qualified because, you know, Heike had her own list. And one, one of the things on her list was My that- The only one. <laughs> the only one <laughs> was, that, was that her man had to be 6'2 or over. That's what she had in her husbands, her family are all professional athletes and they're all tall. So here I come at five, eight and three quarters on a good day. <laughs> in the morning. 
is how I was trying to cheat this <laughs> orders. <laughs> and she was like, listen, you can, we can be horizontal lovers and you're going to be in that box, which is awesome, but you're not my life partner. She must have said that five or six times. And yet here we are today. And so right. sometimes the one thing that you need to get over is- Oh, I'm so glad you're talking about this. Yeah. It is the number one thing that women have all the freaking time on their list. And it's like mathematically, there aren't enough six two guys to go around. And just because they're tall doesn't mean they have any other substance. They just happen to get the, the DNA that had the tall gene in it. But there's so much else to offer. So I absolutely love that this is what you guys are bringing up at this very moment because it is so important. And I'm thinking about all the people listening going, hmm, I wonder how many five, eight, and three quarters I missed out on. <laughs> Good, I can good. tell all these women, short guys rock. So <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a huge fan now. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's really kind of this, you know, making it around this one point that, that you have these blinders that, that come on. And for me, actually, it's another thing that was part of our teaching. So for me, it was always about the feminine, the embodiment of the feminine, how to bring her out, how to really connect. And, and yet I was hiding between six, nine tall guys mm -hmm. right? to just stay in the, you know, in the, okay, I'm going to be hidden here and I can easily, you know, be in the background. And so for me, when, when this height thing specifically came up, it's like, wow, the feminine, it's time for the feminine to stand out. In front. Right to to be in front to be like that to, to to be seen and to not hide anymore, and on top of that, obviously our whole work is around a new paradigm for relationships and sexuality, and so for women to be or for men to always be taller is just such a paradigm, right? Oh. I mean, it's it's like it, something is almost not right. And so I had to move through these things myself, meaning uh, at the beginning, no heels at all. And then slowly I would move up and, oh, okay. I'm, and now I'm through, meaning I can wear high heels next to him and just be completely comfortable to be seen. So right. you know, sometimes the reason Huge. behind like that big item on the list is, well, maybe that's exactly what you're to not just clear and embody for yourself but also for others and so for us it was clear in in our twin flame because it, you know we, we always talk about huge mission and purpose um so when this relationship sexuality all these subjects came up and the feminine the masculine it was just really clear that this was the perfect match and the time to deliver the message and when we look at relationships around us we feel blessed. We feel blessed that this is our purpose. Right. Exactly. And that's what it is. We get the best stuff, right? We, we have the best access to, to anything and everything and having really this fabulous, magical, powerful relationship so that we can inspire others. And what Heike said was really important about the feminine leading. I, the vision I get and have gotten before is that I can protect her so much better when I'm standing behind her because she's in front, she's leading, and in a sense, pointing, pointing, you know, with her empath abilities that way, that way, that way, and her intuition, and then my masculine can guide things that way. But for so long, it's been the masculine in front tearing through everything and dragging his woman behind. But when we put the woman in front, my ability to protect her is so much better because I can see everything. Oh, that's fascinating. I've never thought about it that way, but it totally makes sense. I've got her back, her front, the side, my peripherals wider. But when I'm, when I'm in front and just singularly focus on what I want, he's completely vulnerable. And so it's a, it is a shift in the way we look at things. And I think that was part of our height thing. Well, you know, the, the twin flame signs, there's so many of them, but... Certainly it was that it was that instant eye contact of I knew that we knew that we had known each other for many, many lifetimes. And then within a week or two of dating, I started having visions, which I never had before. Not dreams, visions mm -hmm. of like us together, like in old days in a, in a castle with fires burning inside and 
in temples in Egypt with fires and you know dragons. I mean, just it, it sounds like it's out of the movies, but I was. I know, it's very powerful. You get that. And it was her. It was clearly her. I remember one time holding her in my arms with a knife in her chest that somebody had stabbed her since she had died before. And, and I know Heike has had visions too that I've died multiple times because when we first started dating, these strange things would come up during sexuality because that's when she travels to the stars. And, and there was this, don't leave me again. Don't, you know, don't die again. And so we've had a lot of those experiences. Our bodies are so connected like twins. If I get a stomach ache, she gets a stomach ache. If she gets a headache, I get one. From, you know, from miles away, when we used to work in separate offices, she would text me and she goes, thanks for the headache. And I would have one and I'd be like, wow, sorry. Um, we have an energetic um, telepathy between each other that is beyond words, that we text things at the same time and say, this, say the same thing. We look, we look very similar, which I think is another one of the big traits of, of I put the hair back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, I think I better go put a wig on now. <laughs> and I think the biggest one of all, though, is that twins have a mission to do for the benefit of the planet, not just each other. Soulmates are more of an individual relationship. What are you going to do for each other to grow? Twin flames, when they get past that runner stage, right? Everything's amazing in the beginning. I mean, all of your triggers are going to get fired no matter how advanced you think you are. I thought I was good. <laughs> I'd done my internal work. I read all the books. I went to the courses and I was all healed and happy. I didn't want a relationship. When I came into the relationship, I still thought I was all good. And then she pressed every button possible. <laughs> Love <laughs> it. But I'm so grateful she did because but we, we both I'm, had. I'm still doing it. Yeah, still doing it. <laughs> Some of them. <laughs> but we, we both had the maturity not to run, to look at things and say, wow, thank you for showing me that. This is my crap from something that happened to me in an old relationship that I've got to deal with and clean up. And then, of course, through that ability with each other of growth, our ultimate goal is what can we bring to the planet? And for us, it is. It's love and intimacy and, and, and sexuality and, and showing people that you can have this kind of relationship. We've been together five years now. And that may sound like a short time for some people, but mind you, we work together and live together 24-7. Right. Kind of like we've been married for 20 years. I mean, exactly. We, we are always here and together. And the love and the intimacy and the passion. Listen, last night, I just had the best freaking <laughs> sex of my life with this woman last night and i mean that's what i mean it's in the love is intense the love is unconditional no matter what happens i'm not going anywhere there's nothing she could do that i would say i'm leaving you I mean, I, i'm here I, I would work through it i would i, I mean and, unless we get to the point where we don't want to do this anymore and then and then in that sense, consciously, the relationship has, has, met its, has met its course. I don't see that happening because I call it organic monogamy because there is, there is nobody else on this planet that I can possibly imagine being with. Well, and there's something so powerful when you know your partner has said just that of, I'm not going anywhere, so let's enjoy this, where so many times we're always on that verge of, how long is it going to last? When are they going to leave? What is it going to be their trigger? And so there's that go away, come here behavior that we have so strong in the earlier stages of dating and even in a couple years of dating and maybe even early marriage. And it is so powerful that you own that decision because there's a comfort that your partner can have of like, all right, it's good. And I start to choke. <laughs> but that's what's so powerful is that it is real and it is authentic and you're showing up and that's the difference. There's really nowhere to go. You know, like Jonathan said it, like, even if we wanted to, like, what's next? Like everything is uh, like out of this world in, in the experience and the intensity. And I mean, in a good intensity way. You're alive. And you guys have, there is something about finding that missing piece, that twin, that other half, that part. And it's all those other soulmates you've met along the way and the power of really connecting, but also letting someone show up 
but also letting yourself show up is the gift that you give one another. Because it sounds like, as you guys describe even in your courtship, and I've heard with so many of my clients, that once they really made that pledge to one another, they could both show up at such a higher level and push the envelope for their own growth because the other one was still going to be there to catch them. Yeah, completely. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I love it. So what do you guys feel is part of the difference with the soulmate versus the twin flame? You've touched on it a little bit, but when somebody's in that intensity and wondering how do they kind of understand the difference so they kind of know, okay, this one I really need to hone in on, or this one, you know, this is a chapter, this is a story I need, but it's not for longevity. Well, first and foremost, I believe you should always hone in completely. Right? Exactly. Whether, because we're, we are talking still a little bit of labels, right? And right. A tricky thing. So whether totally. it's a relationship, like a regular relationship, whatever that means, and, and or a soulmate or a twin flame, the easiest way to put it is really for me, like regular relationships, that word sounds, it sounds so less funny, than, but right? it's not. Um, right. A relationship compared to soul soulmate is really it is the same family like it's your brothers and sisters obviously you know okay um i don't know how to jive here and with the twin flame it is really like your identical twin where you feel the other one uh, even if he or she is not around where you have that psychic connection the physical connection the mental connection like everything is there and it, to me it always feels like john is is not my other half but really like version and so that's why i relate so much to it it, it comes with ease and i have to say too um, from our clients it is not the rainbows and butterflies really when you meet there is right. calm in it like mm -hmm. you are right oh okay That's true. you're here you know you don't have that craziness that we usually have in, in new relationships and we, we think about it all the time and we have the butterflies and we're so up in our in our emotions and and, and feelings while meeting him it was the opposite it was like this grounding energy of boom okay i can relax into that and with soulmates you kind of have that too and yet everything is just more intensified and like i said with twin flames it's more of a personal knowing i'm here to do a big job and i can't do it by myself where is he not like I need someone in my life, I want a partner, I just want to, you know, be in love, rather than I, I, there's some big stuff here for me to do. And, and so when you meet a person and you see that alignment and you see the subject, for us it pretty much was easy to kind of know right away what it was because uh, really around no more relationships and if we do that it needs to be all different same with sexuality it always gets stale at the end how are we going to do this better and then and then it's also some kind of both have practice in a different area i like you know, that two elements where you really dive deep in your area of expertise and the other one in the other area of expertise and you start weaving that and you become the super experts, right? Because it's like he taught me, he was the sexuality, I was the spirituality, and we said this before. So he's been in training with me, but just through being with me and, and obviously the lovemaking and the, the traveling, like the inner traveling, uh, where he just gets the downloads through me that, that makes hey. me complete there. And for me, on the other end, he literally brought me into my body because I was just flying up there and it was awesome. Uh, um, I, I love that, though, that you noticed that you were floating away awesome. and that now it was like, hey, hold on, stay in here, let's do this together. Well, and that's the tricky mm -hmm. part when we go into spirituality, personal growth and everything. It, it's all happening here, right? That's as, especially when, this is where we're working. And so going really fully into our body first and foremost it's not safe as a woman right 
and, and we've always been shame traumatized whatever with with our bodies and sexuality and much lighter up there rather than in this structured world where we have to function and way plan more and, fun down here though. and yeah and so he really <laughs> literally made it fun for me to come fully into my body and so five years i'm oh if it's like that then that can actually be fun and i might stick around for that <laughs> that sounds like a good idea yeah, and now i really have such a clear purpose and direction and focus and in order to deliver i do need to come in which is in general a subject I mean, all the time how much we're living in our heads and in the spiritual world all the way in and i was the you know i was the exact opposite i knew i knew all of the skills to be a great lover the whole energy and spirituality component is what haika awoke in me and I, I was very turned off even to the word spirituality because to me it meant religion and i i, I actually i actually had taken no not, not the hippie part but i had actually <laughs> taken comparative religion was one of my majors in college mm. just so i could prove everybody wrong i mean that was really it's, it's really silly i did that but i was turned off to spirituality and yet when heiko so as 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 Heike became more embodied in her in in her sensuality her sexuality and was able to incorporate her spirituality into that, I was able to take sexuality up to spiritual component, which was unknown to me and is well, from this day forward, this is what we talk about, that there is nothing like this on the planet because literally taking the red pill. And so we were two halves that again came together, the embodiment of the body through sexuality and intimacy and, and sensuality, and the Godhead, the, the spiritual component, what I now reframe as shamanism, because shamanism makes a grounded word for me than spirituality, but in a sense, is we, we did combine those two now to create a new entity of embodiment as a couple. That new entity is what goes out and services the world. Again, I think that's the number one difference between the two is that the Twin Flames really have a mission. Uh, another, an, another thing that I forgot to point out is that when we're, when we're separated, it's, it is painful. Like, we first started dating and she would go to Germany for a week or two. I thought I was dying. I knew she was fine. We'd talk on Skype or whatever. And I felt like there were knives in my stomach and I had never, uh, it was literally like something had been ripped out of my body, it was halfway across the world and I, and I was just utter complete loss. And it's very strange. And brings you to the whole subject of codependency. Mm -hmm. right? Where it's like, where does it start? Where does it end? And different with twin flames um <laughs> because it is literally like that that oneness that oneness. you do experience the oneness that everyone talks about and so definitely there is a piece missing which doesn't mean that uh, can't do things and go shopping and whatever but, but big trips <laughs> big trips definitely were a challenge i want to say it's now it, it has gotten better but especially <laughs> Just have that merge happening again, and and you're like, wait, there's there's more to feel. Right. It's, it's a heightened level of awareness that you guys created, but then that feeling of when they're, you know, once you're actually finding to each other, that moment when you both connect and you both own it it's then really hard to kind of pull that apart because it's like. The whole there you are is really a powerful statement and so when you would go out of town it was like oh no 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 now i found you please you know we vibrate together you're a unison of energy and so to hear that pain it's a different pain than oh my gosh she won't come back i i feel rejected i feel left i feel abandoned it's like no our just our energies were just better together absolutely and we even see this in human design i don't know if people are familiar with human design that really talks about um, the different channels and everyone is a different type and we have different channels and energy centers lit up and we both are pretty empty meaning because we're so much in our channels but if we two come together everything lights up 
And, and so this is too where we even saw energetically um, the power that we do have. And so True. I want to go more generalized again. Well, for us, definitely that was ours, spirituality, sexuality. And I believe that's in every relationship, by the way, and, and the paradigm that we're teaching today. And yet there is, there is this other piece, like I talked before, there is those two halves. And it's not just the masculine feminine, it's not just sexuality, spirituality, but, you know, you, two masters meet. And of course, masters are not masters in every area. Um, nope, that's true. But, but two masters meet, and, and, and in that moment, it's almost like a chemical reaction of, boom, something, something now can be, can be brought to this planet, can be delivered, can be expressed. And so if that feeling is within you know, listening here that, yeah, there's, there's just a big piece missing in it. You're kind of on track, but you know you're not completely on track. But I think that's really what true chemistry is, that it is that combustion energy. And everybody wants this chemistry the moment you meet where you're just like gaga all over each other and it's all in the sexual chemistry. But it's really about the chemistry of your two energies coming together to allow that next level of depth and vulnerability and exposure and truly having that support. But also knowing that, you know, obviously not all twin flames become sex and intimacy experts. So it's not about that it's about the two of you showing the example that you already were awesome before you met you totally were awesome but having one another allows that compounded interest of all the goodness to be able to really exude and then feed off each other's energy in the best way which gives more energy and that chemistry explosion is authentic it is deep it is powerful and it is to be coveted in a beautiful way but you love it enough to also share it with others so others can witness your glory. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, I, and you're right. It doesn't, twins can do any business. It, it's just usually that they're doing it together and bringing their two strengths together for the, again, for the benefit of the planet. And another key is that whatever that venture is, is fully 100% supported by the universe. Like, we don't even advertise. Our, our phone just keeps ringing. And right. we just trust and lift up everything to source saying, okay, we're here, we're doing our mission, and, and the universe shows up behind us and says, yes, here's who's next, here's who's next, here's who's next. And we just keep going forward. And now we're going to Paris. <laughs> That's awesome. And that's what's really in a powerful part. And knowing that you two have embraced this, but also you know the universe is helping you. The universe has a plan and you're honoring that. And I'm a huge, huge believer as I work with a lot of angel work and I'm always saying, listen and look for the signs and give the signs credit. You want to give the credit where it's due so you can see more and embrace more. So what are some of the things that you guys notice that just really stand out of signs from the universe that just didn't really happen before you met each other? I want to go back to the soulmate, right? The soulmate was, was really like this, this comfort zone almost, even though there was a lot of discomfort in terms of, um, you know, karmic contracts and, and all of the things to support each other, but it, it never felt like it, it was going all the way. Um, with the twin flame, it really is about, it's about, I know him. You know, and again, that's a tricky thing in a regular relationship. Never say you know your partner, right? But there is a there is a knowing. There's just a knowing. I've I've known him for lifetimes. I don't need any words, and yet I can share anything. Like, right. It's another big thing of transparency. And at the beginning, I remember Jonathan when he would just say, "I'm fine" or whatever, right? What we say because we don't want to go into into a conversation. Um, he gave up on it really quickly because I was hearing it anyways. Yeah. Right. So, so total transparency is, is definitely one of the big ones. Um, mm -hmm. Forget about it. You, you can't hide anything. You can't hide yourself. You can't hide your thoughts. You, you can't hide your emotions. It, it just is all right there. 
Right. And transparency is so important. I think we're missing that in relationships. And it's at all levels, sexual intimacy, daily conversation, running errands, business ideas, but to be able to truly be transparent. And even though you got the vibe, the words, you were hearing it, you also, you know, knew when you needed to talk about things and out release the verbal conversation too. And that's what's really powerful is knowing that that balance, but there's also that comfort in, you already know each other. I mean, I'm a huge believer in past lives and I do love it. And I often ask clients, do you believe in past lives? Because I'd love to go there with this. But if not, there's no point of going there if you're not open to that. And that's okay. And knowing that there's that memory, as Jonathan, you brought up about you saw visions of lifetimes together. And it is so powerful when you allow that story to become real because then you know there's so many more layers to your courtship that will continue because of the past that you've carried along on this spiritual journey. Absolutely. And you know, to answer your question, some of the some of the signs I have seen for support when we when we decided to put up our first workshop, which was called the Art of Touch, like Okay, we have to teach people some of these things that we that we practice ourselves. And totally G-rated events, right? And I, I kind of our first our first going public event was not just sold out. It was like twice as many people as could fit in the whole place. Yeah, like, we we were chaos, we, we were chaos. <laughs> and and obviously it was a learning experience, but it was still amazing. But to say, wow, I mean. Our first event, and look at look at all of the support that came out for this, wanting to know, and that has continued in our work. That all we do is really just show up, and 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 the clients and the people come. Specifically as to source and God and such, we 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 worked one time with a professional NFL player, um, Super Bowl winning NFL player, and we were actually. Uh, up in San Francisco doing doing some other work projects and we were sitting in a bar late at night getting ready to go to bed in our hotel and this six foot eight huge guy walks up and says I don't know who you two are but God told me to work with you love it so like when we kind of joked around what we actually did and intimacy and coaching and everything and he goes well I gotta go pray about that he went upstairs he came back down an hour later and says God said these are the right two people go ahead yeah so, that was, yeah, so so it's really like the people we definitely see the people that are meant to work with us and how mm -hmm. they talk us. That's definitely yeah. one aspect. Um, another big aspect was um, when we met, we were both financially pretty much low, and so business coaches or whatever or or, or support would just come the messages would come through people That's they true. would say i don't i don't usually don't do that but i want to gift you a session i want to do a reading here i want to do this i want to do that um we would even up to the point always the right people at the right time showing up because the next level even a year ago not a year ago before we got married last october we were almost ready to break up mm. wow. <laughs> I was. It's true though, that intensity is real. Right? Where it was like, okay, I, it's just too intense. And, and also the job that we have, I mean, sexuality is, is such a, you know, still such a subject to plow through. And it's like, I didn't sign up for that. I was, so I was throwing my fit. I, I didn't sign up for that. This is the hardest work on this planet to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'd rather be whatever, work at Starbucks, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so done, right? Because there is these levels of expansion, and, and we know this with any right. before the growth, like or during growth, there's this ah, uh, this stretch and and growth pains, growing pains. What's it called? Growth, growing pains. Growing pains, and we had the right person at the right time saying the right things once again. Yeah. And so obviously that was an extreme case. Um, but it also was, when I look back, it was really solidifying officially in marriage, the divine union, that like there was this one last boom. Okay, now what? <laughs> yeah, right? exactly. Once you said, okay, I'm sticking in and now what's gonna happen? What's next? You know, I, I've been married two times before. I know how to get divorced. So that wasn't even the big thing. <laughs> Plus, I never wanted to get married again. And, and we thought, oh, we don't need that. We have the divine union. It was, we called each other husband and wife 
basically from the beginning because we've been it so many times and both remember it but it was really this okay now this is like the the, the last piece of solidifying it officially and then having the right people around you so the huge support system they came from everywhere mm -hmm. not like you got to do it right but really supporting jonathan supporting me us so mm -hmm. Kind of like the universe saying, wait, whoa, 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 no, stop. <laughs> we better, you know. We sure. worked hard to get you here. Now it's time for you to listen to us. Absolutely. So I think this incident happened twice, right? Where it was just really getting to that oh, kind of thing. <laughs> and level. we can't do it. And, and <clears> then <throat> really seeing right so what opportunities do you think people are missing out on when they're on their quest to find their person and they're hoping and wishing and wanting but just not getting there so what do you feel like people are just clues that they're missing opportunities that they're missing in life it's well yeah it's it's a general question mm -hmm. in terms of what opportunities are we missing in mm -hmm. life because it really requires full presence and not already attaching the story and seeing the future and where this is going to go rather than what am i feeling right now because the answers are only in the moment right they're not like right. they're not like the dream that you have and the vision that you have um which all is helpful and yet everything happens here so i still believe any time in a relationship is abusive, it, it's just not it. It's, it's, not, not, it's right? not your twin it's not because it. I, I could never hurt her. So you ever. want so you want to look you want to look for for that piece of commitment. What he said before, right? What Jonathan said before, and how your partner is showing up, and then also both doing their work, willing to do their work. And this is why we now have this new thing of we want a conscious partner right rather than yes i've heard that before it's a good one for people to remember write down i want a conscious partner that's huge yeah. so so the the big dream can be there but what i really always would look for in a man or in, in a woman is how much self-responsibility is there for anything that is happening how much are we both willing to look at our side of the street how much are we committed how much are we showing up how much are we seeing that not it's not just rain rainbows and butterflies right <laughs> yeah and yet and yet i could i cannot be in fact that was my past two relationships too they stopped looking going doing the work and you can see this pretty much at the beginning right if, if even there's a little bit of, of a disagreement, how are you handling it? Exactly. Self-accountability, I think, you know, that's something that people are so quick to say, well, you weren't this way, you weren't that way, so I didn't do this, instead of saying, wow, I should be showing up, or maybe you can't appreciate what I have to offer, or I'm holding back, or I'm in a little box because I'm needing you. You know, it's learning really what your own showing up is i think that's so important so you are very spot on what people are missing with this and if you don't have that i believe you don't have anything agree like because it will show up eventually so that's the main thing that i would look for and then really staying in the moment and going from moment to moment and i want to say when it comes to twin flames definitely look for the magic there's so much unexplainable right happening it just is not logical. So back back to your question on what are, what are people missing out on um, when they're in, when they're constantly in search of their twin? I mean, I, I we've had so many people contact us saying, "Oh, I met my twin and he's married. You know, what am I going to do? I'm not going to date anybody else, and I'm going to I'm going to wait till they get divorced." That person is completely missing out on life. And right. So, I love this. So true. Labels we have. I don't like how they, that they're so, they put people, they put things in boxes. And, and at the same time, all we're trying to do is give a certain type of relationship an understandable meaning, like an orientation. An orientation. Like we call a tree a tree because we all know what a tree means. And right. so we have to have some kind of label to describe this. And despite what some people say, this is not a new agey term. This actually goes back to, mm -hmm. I believe it was Plato that talked about 
two souls coming down to the to the universe as one, masculine and feminine. And so this has um, this has actually gone on for for quite a while. So my biggest biggest thing is for people to watch out for is you've got to go through life experiences. So that if you are to meet your twin in this lifetime, you're ready. And by foregoing, because of labels, by, by, by foregoing the path, you are not, you're probably not going to meet your twin anyways because you're not ready. So you true. Know, all of these things are built by the universe to prepare you so that you grow, that you get better. And so many times, as you know, we run from relationships. Well, we're not getting better when we run. We, we get better by sitting in it and saying, wow, this is mine. Let's look at that. Let's transform it. Let's, let's heal from it. That's the growth. And so the biggest thing I would counsel people is just let life lead. Let life like lead. Let life lead. That's like motto. Do that. Good bumper sticker. <laughs> You're never going to find your twin by looking for them. I, I fully believe that, too. I would. You know, you've heard the saying, love comes when you're not expecting it. I did not want a relationship. I was not looking for my partner. Even though I actually had a feng shui person come to my house before I met Heike. And she's walking through my bedroom, and she's like, why are there all these pictures of single people everywhere? And so she changed, she changed them all into two people and all of my little Buddha statues and stuff had to be pairs and not one. And it wasn't like two weeks later until I met Heike. So something happened energetically there as well. I believe in that. I'm a huge believer in what, what you surround yourself, the energy and the message you're giving. So that's, that's another good affirmation. I love it. You guys are so on. <laughs> it's awesome. Now we've got about five more minutes. What would you guys like to share to tie up this yummy conversation with a beautiful bow? It's really like the whole attraction of of your your relationship, your soulmate, your twin flame. It is really coming from this. So if you can have that love, if you can even start feeling the magic that you are, because you are, and then from there, stay really present with that. Stay present in your love for yourself and in in the frequency of love, and, and really walk your path purpose on your purpose it will match there's nothing you need to change rather than becoming yourself clearer and clearer and to 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 walk that there's another piece to where we're seeing and being afraid that once the twin comes in or the soulmate comes in that that they would have to change their job or change and it's not right the, the, your partner soulmate twin flame will come and walk by your side mm -hmm. it's not about getting in the way and and super life-changing event events in a sense it is just you walk together through life side by side rather than you have to throw everything overboard so the more you know about yourself your passion your purpose the better you time and attract so relax is really relax. my biggest message. Relax. Like it. Uh, and, and enjoy what you are doing. And then my, mine would be just, just know you've got to get your stuff out of the way. I mean, you, if, 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 if you go through life going to each new relationship and having the same patterns and the same triggers fire, you got work to do. Do it. Do whatever is necessary to, to heal those things and transform and own them through them because that's the only way you're ever going to be able to have the kind of relationship where when when you're you know when your mirror shines you're ready to say yeah okay i see that thank you for showing me the speck instead of vomiting out to her everything is wrong with her to mm -hmm. own my own side of the street and i think that that is the evolved conscious relating that much of the planet is headed towards thank goodness mm -hmm. Right. Oh, I love it. And it is so important. And all of this energy and conversation and, you know, thought processing that we're sharing is what's going to make those shifts for people, but comes down to own your truth, let your person show up when it's time, but on that way, don't miss out on living and meeting new people and experiencing all the layers that you can. And then hire someone like Jacqueline who knows how to connect the dots <laughs> yeah. quicker, right? Yeah. 
<laughs> exactly. I can actually see who your person's supposed to be if you're open to it. It's yeah. so fascinating. The clients that come to me that are really open, I my angels will tell me the exact day that they'll that person's going to arrive. They'll give me the name. And those that don't want to hear it, just kind of go, just do your thing. It, it still works. It just takes a little longer. But it is open when you allow yourself to actually let the universe do the work and unfold instead of trying to be in control. I want my person now. Well, it doesn't really work that way, but it does work when you're showing up so that when they do show up, you're actually ready to receive them. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. You guys have been so great. I really appreciate all that you offer to our group and I can't wait to what we have for fourth quarter. Me neither. Thank it's you. Really a surprise. <laughs> It always is. It's such good energy and, you know, this intimacy topic and twin flames and really allowing people to have permission to go to a deeper level is what I'm so proud to have you guys in our group to allow our listeners to step up and go, hold on, they have it. Why can't I? What are some of the nuggets I can get? What are the things I'm like, everybody listening, rewind, hear this again, capture the phrasing, the words, and even just watching the energy of the two of you together is inspiration. And it's wonderful that you're willing to share that vulnerable side that so many people keep behind closed doors and don't express, but you give it to us to give us that extra juicy vibration that we can feed off of as we listen to your inspiration. So thank you. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. You're welcome. And I'm happy to remember to help people remember. Exactly. That's all about remembering for so many lifetimes ago. 